is game number two of our best of three series, second round of Group B, with Fanatic Arctic on the blue side, up against Yuru Red Giants on the red side. Okay, so this is the redemption that Fanatic Arctic needs against uh, YRG, and we can see actually that uh, in terms of the spell, uh, there is uh, a purify for the carry, so uh, with this we could see, say that uh, for the side of Fanatic Arctic, they, they are more on the aggressive side of uh, their lineup, so uh, well, at least for me, if you're a marksman and you're forced to pick up a uh, purifier as well, it means that you're, you are in a very um, a difficult situation mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the early game and even the late game. Now, after the purifier, it, uh, it takes uh, how many seconds before it cools down. So they have to be mindful that uh, Innocent is the best target early game for Fnatic Onyx. Mm -hmm. Yep, and there's many ways for him to get locked down and just yeah. die. San has a means of catching him. CW has a means of knocking him away. Yeah, Loki. Kyrie alone. Oh yeah, Kyrie alone. I mean, Kyrie alone. I think there's no argument there. You're, yeah. you're basically dead. You just submit to the king at that point. But looking at the player emblems, I'm not seeing any master assassin yeah. between the two marksmen, which does indicate that they show respect for each other. They're not looking for lane dominance. They're looking to just scale. Yeah, and I won't be surprised if. Uh, um, uh, this uh, gold dealers would actually prioritize an item that is more on the defensive side because again, there's a lot of potential for um, uh, both teams to go for a gank as early as possible. And again, the play of oh. United Giants as said by Churros is more than 4-1. So Innocent has to be safe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He has to be innocent all the time. Yeah, I mean, hey, we'll see <laughs> whether the law is going to catch up to him this time. But I, I think that right now, Kram is doing a really good job, right? He's already technically gotten oh, yeah. a decent trade against Lupti. They will send resources up to the top side because the turtle is about to spawn, and it's really important that both sides hit four on time. Yep, and uh, it's also a good thing for uh, both uh, boss first to be uh, at the, this lane, so that it will be a lot easier for them to go for this turtle objective. At the same time, there's a space for our boss fights to be at level four prior to the turtle take. So, yeah. so far, since uh, we have a Hayabusa and a Julian, uh, in terms of the levels, same at level 5, and uh, yeah, everyone is at level 4, so be prepared for, I have a deal, nope, um, um, uh, Keyboy is still at level 3 though. Yeah, and uh, pretty early on, Stormy's gonna use that Dominator's Ascent, and even the Faraga armor being broken down by the mid lane. Lupi is low, Cram forced the Flicker out of there, Lupi losing his own, but in the top side of the map, we find the first kill, S.O.D. connects on to nothing, but his skin in their teeth as the guy finds a double kill two minutes into the game. I thought uh, that uh, Kyrie will be back to uh, kill down Yumsa, but uh, there's no shadow there. So uh, it's a nice uh, uh, kill and a play for Yudo Dry Giants. And at the same time, the difference in terms of levels, again, Keyboy, prior to the play, is it at level 4? While uh, Crown was uh, just in front of everyone using that last insanity. Yep, it's a pause 5 and a, an XP lane. But uh, since uh, there's no counter to that play after that last insanity, everyone from Fnatic Onyx just open for... Uh, um, any threat from you to Red Giants. The counterplay was CW, hit your SOD. If you hit that SOD, <laughs> they were, it would have been all yours. But let's talk about some profits. Wait, hold on. So guys is by himself amongst three members. The Oki Shadow Kill is out, quickly uses the Enhanced Swords to get on out of there. Earth Ooh. Shadow by Yields, good read. Can they find the kill to Kyrie? No, they do not. Oh, Stormy is able to get the Mind Eater in time as Cram rotates out SOD to predict Skies doesn't find it. A double for Stormy on this Zask. YRG just slightly ahead in tempo. Hey, yep, uh, Stormy's uh, Nightmare Swan was uh, really on point during that time. Also, Yudder Red Giants is now on the lead. 2.1k, 201 for the Zask. And the effectivity of having a Zask in front of, uh, in the middle of a team fight is uh, just uh, being shown here for this match for Fnatic like Onyx. Onyx. They, they have, have to be, be mindful of. Uh, Stormy's ultimate because if you're in front of, uh, or if you're in the middle of the Nightmare Spawn, you won't be able to see it the damage from time to time oh, oh no like uh, wait why is my health bar at half oh there's a nightmare spawn hey man when when that nightmare spawn is just sucking you off you, there's not much you can do but just take it right unless you can you walk away but even then the dominators of descent is quite an obnoxious spell to deal with speaking of which fanatic onic they could be setting up a gang down on the bottom side of the map. Innocent they is gonna, to. I mean, they spawn out the Grok instantaneously. He's gonna back away, and you the Red Giants, they're coming in to respond to try and steal a cat for themselves. Yeah, and uh, what's we? Oh, okay, oh. there's a setup play. The onwards happens. Oh, it's great! It's the last insanity, allowing Skies to find the kill. What a read 
from Yudu Red Giants. They do lose out two flickers for that play, but they only profit in a kill in Sans. Yep, and uh, this is where it, uh, uh, it is shown that for Yudu Red Giants, again, for game number one, Yums is uh, somehow countered by uh, Key Boy's vision of the show, but for this game, he's all over the place as to why the effectivity of the rotation is uh, really visible uh -oh. for game number two. Uh oh, Dominator's Descent quickly being dropped after getting hit by the SOD and walled off a great nature's bearer by Key Boy, but the space has been taken, and now the anchor of Yudu Red Giant's a little far forward, but finally gets to back away. But look at everything that's happening across the map. Top side, tier one gets the fall. Kyrie catches a wave down by mid as well. And uh, probably Innocent has a better gold uh, against uh, Chewe on this game because again, oh, oh okay, so um, Chewe is at 3.5k and uh, Innocent is at 4.4k. That's a decent, uh, one, um, uh, well, two more items needed for a main item. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Two components to get to that finish line. <laughs> well, ideally the power spike that we're looking for for you to Red Giants, but they're going to take a fair... Oh, they take the turtle. No contestion whatsoever. Not as bloody as we were expecting from Fnatic Onyx, as they don't have much momentum for now. But this gives us a little time to break down and analyze these motions coming out from Fnatic Onyx. Yep, and uh, actually for, for Fnatic Onyx, what they need to do is to have that wild charge. We haven't seen Keyboy do that wild charge flicker, right? You're right. So, uh, right. It's uh, like uh, what they did. RJ's, uh, why are RJ's doing the same thing as to what Fnatic Onyx has been doing game number one? Very surprising plays oh. like that. Yep, Flicker Wild Charge in straight into the all. Keyboy finds Storm, but the guys takes the tower and now the last insanity is going to push on forward. Dominator's descent, making sure that Look B doesn't get to walk away. That was a very fine line of becoming an incredible swing around for Fnatic Onyx. Yep, and uh, I think for Fnatic Onyx later on, they have to uh, like uh, go to other places to secure a kill, like for example against Sekai's. But the Sekai's is really doing a great job here for Yuri Red Giants. 3 0 3 for your children. And the only crackle tool that you have is uh, other B and even uh, the Croc. So after that wild charge and even after the setup play from Ruby, if uh, Sekai's isn't burst down, it's going to be a problem here for Fnatic Onyx. And then, now, even look at the items. There's a huge difference from uh, Kyrie and the uh, Sekai's uh, farm. Well, technically, even for the Heroes more the burst is uh, Sekai's and uh, you are on the physical side in your uh, Kyrie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't expecting that much of a gold differential. Let's pull Charles in to kind of break this down for us a little bit. So far, the game is very much in favor of YRG. They're walking away with a bunch of kills under, uh, under their belt. But is this just a ticking time bomb? I think that Fnatic Onyx just needs a lot more time because Ruby needs to come online, especially in terms of tankability. We've seen how fast uh, Lupi was able to be bursted down, especially by Sakai's. But uh, Red Giants, we said this in the draft, they have a very early game draft. Yeah. They have very thick BP boys. Uh, Moskov also needs a lot of time, so Chiawe already needs to farm those items up. They haven't hit their critical mass just as of yet. But we're going back to the game. Guys, just take it away. All right, let's see what's the next steps here for both Yudu Red Giants as well as Fnatic Onyx. As they're slowly encroaching on this space, let's keep in mind, a lot of cross-map plays are being made yeah. by both of these top-tier teams. And this purple buff, it's important that they steal it away. The more that uh, this uh, game extends, actually it's going to be hard for Fnatic on it because it crams damage, you know, the true damage. It's uh, going to be really hard for Key Boy to be up front. So the winning condition now for Fnatic Onyx is more on the surprising place or probably a steal since uh, this is going to be a Hayabusa versus a Jogger. It's a lot easier to go for a uh, Lord Steel mm -hmm. with a uh, Hayabusa. But uh, yeah, for Fnatic Onyx, as long as uh, there is a split push, uh, as long as uh, the minions are flowing on the sides, it's going to be a lot easier for them to counter out Yudu Red Giants. So far for Yudu Red Giants with this type of lineup and uh, in a sense, uh, um, uh, effective uh, farming, he now has the golden staff. Actually, in terms of the items, Chewe and uh, Innocent's uh, item is basically the same. They both have the Crescent side and even mm -hmm. this uh, golden staff. So it's a matter of positioning for both teams. All right, speaking of positioning, this Lord's getting low. No steals coming just yet from Fnatic Onyx. The SOD coming a little late here. That's going to be Lord slain by Innocent. Yudu Red Giants now have a Lord on their side to start pushing into the enemy territory. Let's see how much they're going to get off of this, right? Because like you mentioned, Fnatic Onyx, they want some extra time and yeah. I, I don't think you red giants is gonna let them they want to cut that time short yeah and uh, knowing that uh, the lineup fanatic on it it's a bit hard for them to go for the clearing 
because you don't want to use that eternal oh, oh. I, I thought that's uh, <laughs> the slip of uh, the year that he's never gonna forget <laughs> <laughs> that could have been disastrous yeah all right all but, right but yeah going back from fanatic onic it's a bit hard if you are um defending uh, all right but this is just a uh, level one lord all right so mm -hmm. it's gonna be a lot easier for them but later on for uh, the other uh defensive stances that they will do if you have the Vitsana, you don't want to use that Eternal Guard just to defend a Lord, mm, right? So yeah, you, that's true. You want to use it as like a, an initiative uh, or initiation type of play with a backup on that or another layer uh, for that wild charge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And let's not forget about the high ground defense coming in from... Oh, wait. He almost does find the Earth Shadow Flake into the onward, but now it's turning into an all-out brawl. The wild charge opens things up for the team. They're hoping that the high ground is going to be enough. Yumes gets on out of there with a the primordial foe. Nobody is now just yet. And that's one inhibitor down. And SRG say that's enough. We're done. We're out of here. The discipline of Yudor Giant 3 on point. On this game, they know how to disengage and when to disengage. After taking the inhibitor turret, uh, they know that they need to go out because for Fnatic Onyx, it was... Uh, Chavo wasn't really part of the, of the team fight, right? He was clearing the beacon wave at the middle lane and the majority of uh, the resources have been already used uh, by Yudo Red Giant. But so far, things are looking good for them. Um, uh, they are on the lead in terms of gold, even the itemization. Uh, Demon Hunter, sword for... Uh, Innocent on this game, so uh, expect that he'll be hitting Lutpi and even oh. Kiboy. Oh, Island. yeah, but even though he's hitting, earlier we were talking about like, oh, there's not much of, too much of a lead between both marksmen, but now that we look at it once again, it looks like, uh, man, Innocent has been a little busy here. I'm not going to say that he broke the law or anything, but he's <laughs> definitely having more gold than he should. He's almost halfway through to getting a Winds of Nature, and that's a big game changer against an assassin. Yeah, and uh, even actually, um, uh, we said that that uh, the hero or the player that could actually get the uh, innocent is uh, Luti. Even the item is not meant, or the item yeah for Luti is not mm -hmm. meant to counter out or to be in front of a carry. So you have to be prepared like uh, something that would negate that the damage per second given by innocent. So as this game extends again for Fnatic Onika, they need to do their own play. They need not to react on the Udora Giant's aggressiveness, but rather they have to be the ones aggressive. They can do another uh, a contest on this Lord, but it might be different. It, it, it's a little hard, right? Kyrie is two levels down. It's an 8.8k lead for Udora Giants. They're just going to blitz this down so fast with the help of Innocent already with his core items complete. Now Fanatic Onyx back in the same position like they were before, right? Forced to play to their inhibitors. Yeah, and uh, you see the damage of uh, San's uh, skill against the Kram, it's really hard for Fnatic Onyx to shred this Viraga armor. Imagine uh, you want this Viraga armor to be um, uh, out or uh, to not be available during a team fight, but uh, since uh, they're lacking on damage, it's really hard for Fnatic Onyx to be in front. Uh, even uh, the flamethrowers here of uh, loot uh, against Lutpi uh, shows a lot of damage already against him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By eight minutes thirty-two seconds, you see the big dip, right, uh, over to the nine minute forty uh, fifty-one second. It's a 10k gold lead. I feel like this is a checkmate angle, right? They've got more items, they've got more gold, and they've got a, a you know a level two, quote unquote, level two lord walking down on their base. This might just be it. But let's take a breath, take a moment here. Conceal comes out from Yums, looking at CW, forcing him to get out of the way. This means that mid inhibitor is going to be found, but uh, taking so much damage here, and everybody Ow! on to Yums' side, finally exploding at the end. They take Yums out straight away, and now Fnatic Onyx might be able to survive another five more minutes only at the cost of their mid inhib. That is a nice defense for Fnatic Onyx, but uh, here's the thing, it took uh, five players from Fnatic Onyx just to defend or try to take a kill against Yudor Red Giant. So this is going to be a long game. As long as Fnatic Onyx is able to clear all the minions and uh, have this uh, flow, they, they need to take at least a uh, first tier turret against you, the Red Giants. Mm -hmm. Go for a space where in Chewe could go for a split push as much as possible. If not Chewe, since uh, the escape route is going to be difficult for him, maybe Kyrie to go for the split push. Uh oh, they could. They could actually they make, make that, that happen. Yeah. Right, right now, the map is looking extremely, extremely red, red here. here. Red, red Giants have not lost a single turret just yeah. yet. But with the Lord advantage that they had just now, basically a minus one on every single category for the time being.
I, I think that Fnatic Onic at this point of, uh, at this point of time, as much as we want to say they need to scale up, we're looking for the big play, and I yeah. think that big play is going to be coming around Lupti or maybe even Keyboy side. More likely Lupti because Keyboy still has 45 more seconds until that flicker comes back up. And um, for uh, Fnatic Onic, they need to focus on uh, uh, building up. Uh, I think uh, more the physical defensive items. Mm -hmm. uh, so far in this game, but yeah, you know that Giants are doing a great job oh, even now with the damage against two players of a fanatic audience and it's just him without the dash without the slow so see the combo the layer of skills here from you the red giants you have this last the slow while well, the last insanity uh against cram so or from cram so it's kind of difficult here for fanatic onic to penetrate he's literally a he's literally a thumbtack he's yeah. the lego piece that everybody steps on and they're like oh i don't want to walk into this room anymore <laughs> every single time they walk up it feels like they're getting chucked out wait the Ferrara armor is broken the oki shadow kill is out Finally, breaking his immortality, his Faraga armor is back up now, and you do Red Giants, they're rethinking this plan, they're like, okay, we might have lost the space, but we could do something about this. Let's see how they play it out, because they gotta worry uh, from the side of Fnock about the top and middle waves. Okay, so there's a flicker available for Kiboy. Whenever there, if there's an entry point to either take down Stormy or maybe Innocent, uh, it's gonna be a nice play for Fnatic Onic here. Luti is at the bottom lane or at the middle lane, but there's oh. a vision for you, the Red Giants. I heard a conceal, by the way. Yep, here it goes. Innocent, he's running for it to get on the oh. CW. They flicker on top of him and they secure the kill. Crab takes it away with the help of Yums with a flicker. Earth Shower once again. What great timing from Yuru Red Giants. They should be able to secure this no problems whatsoever. Kyrie shows up on the bottom of the map, but they know that this Lord is in their hands. Keyboy, he's trying to run away. But Innocent, Yums, and Kramer are like, no, you don't get to walk away for free. Last Insanity being committed ah! despite the wild charge, forcing him to flicker, and they trade flickers. I'm offended to pull Kram back, and here comes the alt from Sans. They trade. Keyboy goes down. I'm trying to think if that is worth it. And with the Luminous Lord walking at their base in front I of their crystal, it. this might just be it. Oki Shadow Kill to try and even the tides, oh. but it's done. It's over. The equalization from the Yudu Red Giants. And we could see on their faces how happy they are with that performance. It was uh, a forced kill against Keyboy, so there is no added defensive person for a fanatic on it. What a great job for you, the Red Giants, to even out this game. And we're heading into game number three. Yep, this is a game number three. This is why Stream A is so exciting. We're gonna bring Churros back in once again. This has been an exciting matchup thus far, but Churros, what do you think about this so far? I got two things to say. The first is uh, the first fight that YRG actually won, first team fight, was right before the first turtle. And the fact of the matter is, YRG really likes those split fights. We've seen how uh, Sakai was with, was with Yums at the top side, uh, Cram was able to push away the main damage dealer being Sans, and that was just it. And then they snowball from there. They do very well with maintaining their gold lead or gold difference in terms of the economy, in terms of the itemizations, and just going full on to attack damage as well. The second thing is, YRG is so good at playing death balls. <laughs> You've seen like you know, the triangle of uh, the triangle of death. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Cram and Yums in front, so it was like a upside down triangle. Okay, okay, and okay. Oh, okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was doing like this. And it started at the back, and Innocent in the middle. Oh, they, they perfected it oh, so, right. so well. Every single team fight is so difficult to get to Innocent. And I remember in the draft, I was saying, oh, carry is a little bit tough because you don't really have uh, a lot of range. You need to get up close and personal, and you need a very, very thick wall. Well, here you go. You've got three thick walls with the Dominator descent from Stormy yeah. with Yums trying to always set things up with Cram being so hard hard to kill in every single team fights. I think this was just an immaculate game coming in from YRG. It is an immaculate game, and I have to say, the biggest difference here is the fact that Cram actually got to play the video game, yeah. right? Because yeah. Lutti, by the time he got the Athena shield, the game is pretty much done. It, it, like, everybody looking at YRG like, Cram is at 10k gold. Sakai is past 10k gold. Stormy getting there, but not there yet. Innocent, 12k gold. Yeah. At the end of the game is 11k gold lead. In the middle of the game, uh, it was uh, the highest lead that it had in the mid game was 7k goal and never went down and that's what what makes YRG such a good team because they understand their momentum they're able to ride that wave and surf that wave and just keep increasing I'm so excited to see the graph because 